says we're live on Facebook. Cash Call is back live. I hope we are, I hope this works, Brian. You know, me too. Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> stuff doesn't quite work. Good to see everybody back in Lab Code Agents. Brian, why don't you do the intro to today's show while I try to tee up getting us on Facebook over here? Absolutely. Hello, Lab Code Agents. Super excited. So we're doing something that we've never done before on this show, and I'm really excited about it. We are going to listen to multiple calls, and uh, I'll be honest, I haven't listened to Dale's, and he hasn't listened to mine, but we're going to critique, and we'll critique each other's, and we just want to give you an opportunity to see, even sometimes we have success, because, you know, some of the stuff that I'm going to show you, people have success, but at the same time, I think that there's some failure. So ultimately, even the person that you go out and show a house to, and they write a contract, doesn't mean you couldn't do better. That's what we're really focused on today, and I think it's going to be pretty cool. I'm excited for it. Awesome. All right, Brian, I'm going to challenge you do yours first all right let's do it all right all so right. the biggest technical thing is will i do will i know how to run the text so we're about to figure that out all right click this sure if i can hear it then they can hear it all right so know, we'll do this uh, chat in if you guys can't hear it and i'm going to write that in the comments all right one two three let's go this is stacy hutchins um we were interested in the house I just lost it. Let me see. Oh, it's back now. Two six dogwood. Uh huh. I think that's one of our brand new listings. It is. All right, pause it. The five bedroom, three bath, twenty. Perfect. Pause it. Okay, so let's talk about this. This is one of the things that I I teach. Like, this is really funny, right? Hey, I'm interested in this address. And you hear, oh, that address? Ticky tacky, ticky tacky. Uh, hold on a second. I think I'm going to find ticky tacky, ticky tacky, right? The whole yeah. time we could be doing discovery instead of like la 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 data entry, right? Uh, what do you think about that, Brian? I feel the exact same way when I listen to this call. And by the way, let me just say this. I won't tell you the name of the agent out there. Maybe she's watching. Maybe she isn't. But uh, ultimately, she's a great agent. As a matter of fact, one of the best agents on my team. But she didn't spend she, – she missed an opportunity. There's a 15 seconds, and we're all kind of sitting there going – and I'm sitting there feeling uncomfortable, and I'm just listening to it. How does that buyer feel on the other end? Like, um, 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 that's what this is going on. Do, 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 yeah, do, 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 do. we should play like, Jeopardy music. <laughs> so, right. so, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Well, let's talk about what she should do instead, Brian. Perfect. So, oh, uh, hey, you know what? I want, I'm interested in 432 Cedar Avenue. Absolutely. Let me look that up. In the meantime, if you don't mind, what are you guys looking for? All I'm Great. trying to do is get them to start talking. Go ahead. Yeah. Here's what I would do. Uh, so you say the same thing, Brian. Hey, Dale, this is, uh, this is Brian. Uh, I, I, I'm just calling. I'm looking for some information about uh, 432 Cedar Street. Oh, 432 Cedar Street. Oh, that's fantastic. What would you like to know about it, Brian? Well, I'm looking to, to know the price, bedrooms, bathrooms, you know, just basic info. Oh, great. Okay. Price, bedrooms, bathrooms, and basic info. Anything else you want to know about it? Uh, let's start there. I, I think we're good. Okay. That sounds good. Uh, Brian, do you live in the neighborhood? No, I live, uh, you know, I live uh, next town over looking to move okay. in this neighborhood. Love this neighborhood. Great. Discovery, discovery, discovery. All I did is just found out what you want to know, acknowledge what you want to know, and ask you what I want to know. Exactly. And, yeah. and yeah, you know, it's kind of, you know, I call it acknowledge, respond, pivot, which is basically what you're doing. Hey, so you want to know about 432 for Cedar Street? Great. It's this, this, and yeah. this. Out of curiosity, what are you guys looking for? Or where are you yeah. going? Where are you? So, you know. And by yeah. the way, I'm standing in line at the grocery store and I can do this, right? I don't have a computer in front of me to go ticky tacky on. Right. And, and, and that's exactly the thing. It's super important, guys, is, and I learned this by default. Um, <laughs> Ten years ago, I had to figure out how to do this because, once upon a time, Zillow wasn't a big deal, right? And for all those agents who've been around as long as I have, when I first started buying Zillow leads, no one knew how Zillow worked. And, and what I mean by that, the public had no idea. So when they called you, they assumed that you were the listing agent on every single house that they called you on. Yeah. So I just learned to fake it. One, two, three, make sure, you know, give me a second. In the meantime, and then I start talking to them. In the meantime, I'm on my phone or my computer, whatever, looking it up. But I'm doing discovery. They feel comfortable. I feel comfortable. It's a huge opportunity because they won't get off the phone until you give them the information that they want, right? Right. Yeah, they're going to stay there. Uh, all right, let's 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 finish listening to this call. So all she right. asked about the address. Agent's looking up the address. Agent starts giving details about the address. Here we go. Hey, Dale. This is Stacy Hutchins. Um, 
505 on the square footage, 0.43 on the lot, um, built in 96. Pause. Right. She didn't even ask any of that. No. She that was ask. the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> he called up yeah. and she said, when was that built and how big is it? Your agent would have been right on point. Yep. But there's a real good possibility the person doesn't give a flip that it was built in 96. And as a matter of fact, even worse than that, you told them it was built in 96 and they're like, oh, crap, oh, I don't want anything older. That's than too old. I want something newer. Bye. Click. They're immediately trying to get you off the phone because you're giving them too much information. Right. Exactly. So funny. Go ahead and hit play. All right. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, listed I for 235. That's okay. Correct. So, yeah. Uh, it blanked the out. Sometime? They're asking if someone could show it to them. What time are you thinking? Um, For some reason, the sound keeps going out. So basically what that person says, and I'll, I'll continue to play it, is the, the buyer's asking, I'd like to look at it today, and the agent said, great, what time? And the buyer said, sometime between 2.30 and 3 o'clock, and that's where we're at. Okay, got it. For some reason, your sound keeps going in and out. I don't know why. Yes, let me see if this is the right phone number that came through. Is your phone number 479-228-4275? Yes. Okay. You said your name was Stacy. Christy, right? Oh, Stacy. No, so sorry. It, came, it no. says Al Big is the name that came to him. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I don't know where that came from. Well, it's a new number, so maybe. Oh, it just okay. blanked. Let uh, me look and see. It's asking for a two hour notice. <laughs> and you said what time works for you? Uh, Tuesday. Oh, blanked out again. All Tuesday. right, let me call the showing center and see if I can get that set up for 2.30 or 3, and I can holler back at you text at this number as well? Yes, uh-huh. Okay, let me, let me, either I'll either call or text you back and let me know when I got that confirmed. Okay. It is occupied, right, so it much. has to go through the seller, so I will let you know once they confirm it. Sure, that sounds Okay, I appreciate it. I will talk to you soon. No! Where are you going? Yeah. What's, no. what's the next thing that's going to happen? This lady's going to get off the phone, call the next listing agent about the other address, right? There's God so... forbid it's one of us. Yeah, Both God forbid it's somebody who's good. <laughs> We're going to steal that lead, right? Hey, do you, are you, um, have you made appointments to look at any other homes? Oh, yeah, I just talked to Brian's agent over here about this address. Oh, I can show that to you. Two, why don't we just make a whole trip out of it? And I'll add a few other ones. I'll call and let them know that we're going to see that one. They don't mind. It's not their listing anyway. Yeah. And, and let me say this. Theoretically, I'm going to say if you if you let 100 real estate agents listen to this phone call, the majority of them will go, yeah, that's fine. They got the appointment. <laughs> you know, it, it seemed like we had good rapport. And we did. You know, the agent and the buyer had decent rapport. They made a little joke about the name and all that kind of stuff. And so we had good rapport. We did okay there, but I don't know when this person's going to buy. I don't know why they want to buy. I don't know why who I, you know, if they, I love this. Buy, if they already yeah. have an agent, uh, if they're the, even, even the person buying, right? Yes. She could be looking for her kid for when they go to grad school five years from now. So we don't know yes. that. So we miss the basics and, and Dale, you know, I, I've been teaching a lot of stuff for a long time and I've started teaching my people what you're teaching in the who, what, what, who, what, why, when, where, and how. And yeah. simply because it's a different way to look at it and it resonates differently. But I, I don't even know, I guess we have where, um, this house, but you know, that's really, yeah. we missed all the W's. And, oh, man. All and of them. again, let me just say this, this is one of my best agents. So I'm oh. going to assume that, that, that this person had a bad day and this wasn't their best phone call and we all, we're all off sometimes. But you know, it really just emphasizes how important it is to come to every single thing you do with a plan. Yeah, and you know what? Here I want This is for everybody on Facebook right now listening to this. You and I do a ton of training, right? And we talked about this off camera. We do a ton of training. And especially when you think that you've been in the business for a while and you've been doing things for a while, you think you know everything, right? So if Brian and I said to you, hey, 
you know what? You really need to ask questions about the who and the why and the when and the what and the how much. You, you would say, oh, pff, I know all of that. I could do that in my sleep, right? Just like this agent who sells a lot of houses who didn't do any of that, right? As basic as you think it is, I guarantee you that a lot of people are not doing what they're supposed to do. And, I mean, it's one of the reasons – I make a living, right? Me too. <laughs> and, and you too, that people aren't doing what they're supposed to do. So we have opportunity to train them. All right. So let me see if I can play my call here. Okay. Do you want to finish up real quick on, on the thing? So I, I want to make sure that we, we button this up before you play your call. So here's the main thing that I took away from this, just if I had an overall. Every time you get somebody on the phone, do a flip and discovery. If they're willing to talk to you, yes. do it. And, you know, this person didn't even, honestly, this agent didn't even try to do a discovery. It wasn't that the buyer pushed them off the phone. They didn't even try. That so, buyer would have told them whatever they wanted to know. Absolutely. And who knows? I'll be honest with you. I haven't followed up to see if this closed, if we showed that. I don't know what happened. But what I do know is we missed a huge, huge opportunity to build rapport, do a discovery, and bring value. All we did is the thing that Open Door is trying to replace us with of, open the door. That's literally the only thing that we volunteered to do. We did, we brought no other value and that is a little depressing. So anyway, go ahead, Dale. Absolutely. All right. So let's, let's hear another call. Now this is going to be a little bit different and I'd love to solicit some audience uh, participation here, some audience feedback on this one. This one's going to be a short one also. And give me a thumbs up. if you Frank can Domino. Oh, Mr. Domino, this is the how you doing? Good. I'm doing fine. Well, that's awesome. I was giving you a call, Mr. Domino. I saw that you had a property over on Buckingham Drive out in York County that came off the market, so I just didn't know if that sold or if it was still for sale. No, I fired a realtor. I fire all realtors. None of you do anything. <laughs> okay. So is, is it for What's that? Fires every realtor. Fires every realtor, right? So this guy's fired up. He's clearly an expired, right? Uh, so let's hear what happens. Okay, so is, but is it for sale you, you or like, you, you didn't like that, did you? Yeah, well, I mean, it was for sale, and you're calling to tell me if I list it with you, you'll sell it, and then I'm going to say to you, if you had a client, you should have brought him over and showed it to him anyway, but you didn't, so no, thank you. And click, and now he hangs up and he's gone, right? So I, I wanted to play this one, Brian, only because you know we started off. We usually try to be nice to people, right? Mm -hmm. He's an expired. We get into a call with the expired. There was really nothing wrong with the way the guy entered the call. You can't really find any fault with the agent. What do you do? Somebody blows you off the phone like that. Or if you hear somebody is going to be adversarial like that. So my first thought when I come to adversarial is mirror match. And what I mean by that is that guy basically, what I heard him say is, is all realtors suck. I would go, you know what? The majority of us do suck. They do. I hate them. Worst part of my job. Yeah, and, and, and then I would probably follow up with this. Thank God most of them suck or my job would be really hard. Hopefully what I'm trying to do, this guy thinks he's funny, as you can tell, because he made a couple of jokes in there. I'm going to joke right back with him. And here's the thing that you've got to understand when you're in any situation is mirror and match quickly as possible. And so you've got to be ready. And that's why I really pitch prep because – if you're not on your toes, this guy's going to blow you out of the water. And by the way, it's probably the 10th person who's called this guy. So he, he, he practiced his script and he didn't give it to you. So that's, that was my initial thought. How about you, Dale? Yeah, you know what? So uh, Devin Flores just wrote, I would agree with him. Devin, love you, but I would disagree with him. Uh, in fact, this is uh, – so I train – usually what we train is we never make anybody wrong. This is a person you have to make wrong. Right? Okay. This person is not going to respect anything other than somebody who argues with him or st says that they know something different than he does. This guy, this type of person is the exception to the rule. He will listen to you if you object to him and you sound as strong as he sounds, right? Yes. If you're like, oh, I'm a nice realtor. You'll like me instead of the other ones. He's like, get off my phone, right? I'm going to go – uh, steal the neighbor kid's baseball that just landed in my yard and shred it. Like he's that guy, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to stand up to him. Um, I want to hear, I'm going to go back to when the first, when he first reacted here, uh, Teresa, I think he wanted to speak about his experience. Yeah, he did Teresa. And then he hung up. How you doing? Good. I'm doing fine. 
That's awesome. I was giving you a call, Mr. Domino. I saw that you had a property over on Buckingham Drive out in York County that came off the market, so I just didn't know if that sold or if it was still for sale. No, I fired a realtor. I fire all realtors. None of right there. I fire all realtors. You do anything. None of you do anything, right? Just like you pointed out, Brian, that's where you got to jump in, right? You've got to yeah. jump in there with something like, man, it sounds like you hired all the wrong realtors or something. Or you could also do a joke. Hey, I'd love the opportunity to get fired. <laughs> <laughs> but so, and so my, my strategy, and I agree with your strategy, my strategy is a pattern interrupt. So this guy's, in, you know, when I teach basically a lot of stuff, step one of going on a listing, step one of doing anything is, is greeting. So hi, step two is take control. Guess what? This realtor has lost control. <laughs> That's funny. All right, good. Yeah. So I wanted to give that short one to you guys. What do you do when somebody is, you know, uh, difficult like that and uh, they're adversarial? So just to recap, um, Brian, pattern interrupt uh, and funny. Uh, I would say you can either be pattern interrupt and funny or you can make them wrong and argue with them back. Right. And fortunately, so I was when I when I listened to this call, I was coaching a bunch of people. Most of them did not have like a driver personality, but I'm like a DC, so I'm just <laughs> waiting. Like I, I just wait for somebody like that. You know what I mean? I'm like, great, you're here. Now I get to argue with you. Awesome. Nice. Everybody all day long, and it's killing me. Yeah, and, and I'll finish with one other thing. You could also get him to talk and vent is another approach too. And so out of curiosity, tell me why all realtors suck. That's what Teresa just said in the comments. She said, I think he wanted to speak about his experience. Yep. So, but you've got to give him that opportunity and you got to show that you're willing to listen to him if you're going to go down that road. And again, there's not necessarily a right, well, there is a right way, but all three ways have possibilities and all three ways will work with some people, won't work with other people. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Oh, by the way, just a shameless plug. Let's put this in here. Anybody watching now, if you want to get one of your calls listened to, all you need to do is send it to us. You can email it to Dale, dale at smartinsidesales.com. We will put you on the show. And in fact, we'll even invite you up if you want to come up and you want to talk about your situation or you want to talk about a particular call, we're here to help you. And uh, this is the trust tree. This is out of love. We're not going to beat you up or throw anything at you. This is here just to help you to basically, Brian and I are willing to provide the coaching that you're not getting out there in those streets. So bring your call in here and we'll help you out. Yeah. Uh, and, and let me say this. I don't, I can't speak to that call, but I can speak to the first call. There's, there's so much opportunity there and there was so much opportunity in, in both calls to do better. And here's the thing, guys, this is, this is what I'd like to tell everybody listening. Imagine if you converted 1% more than you're already converting. 1%. That doesn't change a little bit. That changes the trajectory of your career. So, you know, if you think like, well, I'm okay on the phone. I do just fine. I'm sure you do. But we're talking about something that can take you from a person who closes two or three deals a month to a person who closes four to five deals a month. And by the way, it makes your life easier and better. Oh, yeah. Listen, who said money is not uh, money? Money is something about money doesn't create happiness or some, some crap like that. Uh, it sure greases the wheels. I can tell you that much. One of my, one of the good meetings I listen to says money doesn't charge money, doesn't create happiness, but I've never seen somebody unhappy on a, on a jet ski. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> on vacation on the beach. It's hard. It's tough to be sad. Uh, okay. So uh, we're going to play this next call and I just want to preface this a little bit. It's going to be a little bit more subtle and it gets into some of the techniques that we teach which Perfect. is, this is what I say, right? When, when you're talking to a lead, you, uh, this is how I put it. When, and when I say buying, uh, it, it, people get confused. But essentially, before you try to sell anybody anything, right? Before you try to sell your team, before you try to sell your services, before you try to sell using you, uh, you want to find out what that person wants to buy, if you understand what I'm saying, right? You want to sure. understand what kind of salesperson they want, or you want to understand what they want to get out of their home sale or purchase, right? Or you want to understand how, what they want to get out of the service that they'll be using before you try to sell it to them. So let's listen to this call and we're going to hear an example of where that doesn't happen. 
and I. Hello. Yeah, hello, Kara. Yeah. Yeah, hi. I can hardly hear you. Oh, let me see if it's because of the volume. Does that sound a little better? Not really. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was just trying to get in touch with you in regards to Raymond Drive. Yes. And so that big pause there, get in touch with you about Raymond Drive, right? And waiting. Don't wait. This isn't, we didn't talk about this, but don't wait. Just fill, what do you want to know? I'm calling about your property at Raymond Drive. I want to know X, right? Yep. If it's not her property, she's going to tell you, right? Yeah. You're not going to get five minutes down the road and they go, oh, by the way, this is on the house. Right. You might get seconds down the road, but not five minutes. Exactly. So we tell everybody, just be assumptive, right? Hi, so-and-so. I'm calling about your property at this address, and this is what I want to know. Just get it out there, and then we can talk about what needs to be talked about, not that big gap where you can lose control of the conversation or there's confusion. Because there's one thing, Brian, I don't know if we've mentioned this on a previous call. People do get fatigued. Uh, being on the phone with a salesperson, right? If you're all if you're all over the place, right, and you're not purposeful in your conversation and you're not moving the conversation forward, if they don't feel it's moving forward, they're going to get burned out and stop talking to you. So don't waste any extra time. Get down to the meat of the subject, which is, are you going to sell your house, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I saw that it uh, was withdrawn off of the market. Are you going to be looking to sell moving forward? That's his question. Yes. Okay, are you interviewing new agents, or what was going on with it? We already have a new agent. We already have a new agent, yeah? Okay, so that's the objection. Now, what we teach is if you get run into an objection, somebody's not going to do what you want to, them to do, when you want them to do it or who you want them to do it with, you better understand how they're going about something first before you try to change their mind. But instead, let's hear what the agent does. Oh, okay, okay. So you guys took it off to switch agents. Correct. Okay. Did you guys already end up signing or are you in the process of doing so? We're in the process. And I'm sorry, I didn't catch your Daddy, name. Yeah. My name's Corey. I'm with Atlantic Sotheby's. I didn't tweet that part out. I'll just talk over Chris it. Weaver Real Estate Team. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> um, I did just want to see, okay. would you be open to basically seeing a different approach uh, that my company could provide versus everybody else? Um, okay, now, he's pitching, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so he's pitching. And what I'm saying is, don't pitch until you understand what this person's doing and why, right? She said, we're in the process of finding a new agent. Well, what kind of agent does she want? Right. Why is she looking for a different agent? How will she know when she found the right agent, right? right, right. Out of curiosity, what, what was it that you didn't like about your last agent? Exactly. So that I'm not that person. Right. What if that last agent talked about how big they were and how many houses they sold, right? And, and they, they didn't, didn't sell my house. <laughs> Guess what I'm not going to talk about? How big I am and how many houses we sold, right? I'm not going to mention that. So... You can be, you need to understand, this is when I say, understand what they're buying before you try to sell them something. Yep. Right. And, and, and by the way, that does two things. First of all, it gives you the roadmap, but, but more importantly than that for me, I, I was doing some script training earlier today and we were creating objections that didn't exist because we're start telling people, well, and by the way, this and this and this, well, they didn't even think about that. And now all of a sudden they've got a new objection in their head. Don't create objections where they don't exist. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, Brian, or, uh, Brian, when we were talking about doing discovery earlier with that call that you played where mm -hmm. the buyer calls in, buyer wants to talk about a house, the agent really didn't find out who they are, what they're doing, why they're doing it, when they're going to do it, right? No. It, the discovery is should have been the same on the call that I just played, right? You call up this woman who tried to sell a house before, was unsuccessful, and now tells you that they are, uh, well, one says we found an agent and then says they're in the process of finding an agent, right? Do discovery. Mm -hmm. How did you go about that? How did you make that decision, right? What, uh, where are you at now? How did you know that was the right agent? So these are the questions that you need to, you need to do a discovery with her 
so that you, then you can sell her what you need to sell her and, and be what you, what she wants to buy. But it's just the same as doing the yeah. buyer's. Let, let me point out a positive thing though. One, one of the things that I did like that this guy did is the majority of people on that phone call who hear, well, I've already found the agent. All right, thanks. Let me call my next person. He at least pushed through. And I appreciate the fact that he didn't do it perfectly, but he didn't give up. He didn't go, <sighs> he, he went, he at least pushed through it. And I think that that's an important key. And you, you and I talked about that a couple of weeks ago, push through, even if you don't do a great job with the scripts and you don't say the right thing and you don't, Push through step one. So absolutely. I give you credit for step one. Yeah, absolutely. He, they've been working with us for a while now, and he's a bulldozer. Like, he's a natural bulldozer. And, you know, we've been able to help develop them to the point where they don't get phased. That You know, they'll go through two, three, four no's before they'll give up and let the bone out of their mouth, right? Absolutely. Um, which a lot of oh, – thanks for pointing that out. A lot of people listening, man, if we could get them to that stage, they'd close <laughs> more business, right? Yeah, even if you don't do it well. You're still right. on the phone. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right, good. So um, I think we're at time for today. So again, anybody watching, we love having you here. If you'd like to get some of your calls recorded, all you need to do is email them in. I put it in the chat there, uh, the email address you can send them. And I think this is going to be a, a regular feature that we're going to be cycling in and out of here in our show. If you like, if you like this, I think we've already gotten some positive comments. If you like this, chat into the comments or comment that you like this. Give us a thumbs up. Give us some fire signs or something like that. Uh, let us know that you like it. Absolutely. Good? And I'm excited about this. This is a fun thing to do. And by the way, thanks for all the people who didn't volunteer to have their phone call. Play. I'm just kidding. But we <laughs> The people who let us kind of pick them apart. And again, our objective here is not to say anyone's doing a bad job. Our objective here is to allow people to see the examples and just, it, we're talking about minor tweaks, right? Dad? We're not talking about the fact that this person, you know, just gave up. So we really appreciate that. And uh, I enjoy the heck out of this. In case all of our loyal, loyal listeners um, who are not going to be in San Diego next week, we, Dale and I will be in San Diego next week. So I think we ought to point out that uh, next week is LCA Live and we will not be having a show because we will be in San Diego doing the same thing in person. Yes, absolutely. Come see us. Come chat with us. Uh, we'd love to see you guys there. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be spreading the gospel of how to convert more leads and have better conversations live. Absolutely. So I get to see how tall Brian yeah, yeah, I'm not Hopefully that tall. Not taller than me. Okay, good. <laughs> I get it. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> All right, good seeing you. Thanks, Brian. Bye. All right, good. I stopped the live stream. Okay. So yeah, we got we got good comments on this, man. This is awesome. Um, I had no idea how it was going to go, but uh, yeah, no, it's uh, awesome. Yeah, good. I'm glad you like it. I was. That's why uh, last week when you were, uh, you, I could tell you were nervous. I was like, don't worry, dude. This can be great. This is the best thing. The content is already created for us. It's like uh, Matt Silva gave us. Oh, he gave us a bunch of uh, thumbs up here. I don't know if you see the comments. Wait, I got to actually open up Facebook. I didn't have it open during the call. Yeah, Matt, uh, Matt Silva's blown it up. Boom, look at that. All right, so we're, well, I think we got a winner here. Yeah, um, the content's already created for us. It's like uh, uh, who were the old, the two old guys uh, at the Muppet Show that sat up in the box? and I can see them. I can't remember their names, but I know exactly. <laughs> we're, we're, that's awesome. I, I, I would love to meet those guys. So my dream has come true. Yeah. Now you get to be one of them. Uh, all right, cool. So, uh, good. What, uh, do we have the plan for next week? Uh, we're out next week and then the following week, are we doing an interview or what are we doing? I think we got Chris Smith. Let me double check. Let me open up the chat. Didn't you say it was like July something? Yeah, but you got to remember, well, all right, let me pull this up. We did, we did a thing. So surely we have something. And who knows, maybe we'll do this again because it'll be two weeks. So uh, let's see. Uh, by the way, I talked to Barry this morning. Yeah. This is what he, he suggested after I had a discussion with him, and it's it'd probably make it easiest on us all. He's like, man, I'm kind of nervous about it. And I was saying, well, you know, it's going to be the three of us. He goes, why don't we do this? Why don't I just simply ask you and Dale a couple questions? I was like, I'm like, I'm good with that if, if Dale is. Um, yeah, that's fine. So we're, we'll, we'll build out some framework, but basically we'll kind of make it a pseudo panel. And I mean, you get, you know, that, that, that works for me. I mean, it wasn't what I initially had planned, but it works. Yeah. I think that sounds good. We can make it. Right. Well, guess what? 
it doesn't seem like we have something. We just wrote guest Brian. So that's not good. Um, okay. We need to come up with a plan between now and then. Uh, wait. Oh, Chris Smith is, he's 710, July 10th, right? Yep. Okay, good. Uh, right. Let's just do another call review. Fuck it. Good. Perfect. We'll guest after that. Okay, so we'll change this. I'll just go in there and delete it. All <clears throat> review. I think that we can do that at least once or twice a month for a while. Oh, yeah. And, you know, we can we can be a little bit more strategic with it if we want to be. Um, but, yeah, I think that we can do it at least once or twice a month. So, um, so the 13, the 13, 13, 14, 15. Is that really 13 through 17, or did I do them wrong, the numbers wrong? Uh, let's see. So one, two, three, four, that's right. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Third, yeah, you did the numbers wrong. You, it should be 10, 11, 12, and 13. Okay. So 10, no, uh, well, we have nine through 12 on one tab and then we have 13. Oh, hold on. You're my, you're, but the but they're labeled differently. <laughs> Hold on a second. Nine through twelve. Yeah, they're just labeled wrong at the top. So, oh, you know why? Well, this is all kind of goofed up. Okay, so the date was. There's all kind of, so this should be six five. I'll fix this. Okay. Um, this is six five, and this should be show eleven. And then this should show 12. Oh, no, it isn't. This should show 12. 12. Let's see, 13. Hold on. Let me see something real quick. 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. So this should show 13, 14, 15, and 16. It should be 13 through 16. Okay. Now I can edit this name. This one's going to be 17. 17, and we're doing four, so 17, 18, 19, 20. 17 to 20. It's kind of crazy that a month from now we'll be in our, doing our 20th show. <laughs> it's funny how that racks up, isn't it? It really is. So how are you, how are you liking this? Uh, I like doing it. Me too. Yeah, uh, and, and I like uh, finding things that are other than just me talking half the time. <laughs> I thought the interview with Kane went great, by the way. Yeah, that was good. Everybody liked hearing that. Um, I, I think that if we keep finding unique guests like that, I mean, there are not many people out there running an eight, uh, eight, ISA to per, eight person ISA department. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> Who's not a competitor of mine. <laughs> <Trying to compete. laughs> yeah, you, don't want Eric, you don't want Eric Hatch on the show? or. <laughs> no. uh, he, he, uh, that I have never actually, well, no, we accidentally, I hired these people to do like online fucking prospecting. And of course they like tried to message and prospect Eric. And I was like, uh, he was annoyed. Um, and I was like, Oh, sorry, man, that was a bot. Uh, you know, like that was a, that was my Filipinos. I apologize. <laughs> I don't think he thought that was funny. Whatever people, I, I've been on the wrong end of the phone call. It, it is what it is. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So is your business going well? Yeah, doing, doing really well, actually. And, you know, I, I mean, you know, I, I always try to temper what I say because I know you've got, you know, I know you're on in, in Michael's camp. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm at that point in my business where I can't take on any more coaching clients unless they just want to pay me more money. And so I'm figuring out how to diversify, sell more of my training courses and push more people into group coaching. And so I'm interviewing salespeople right now because I just don't have time to follow up with my own fucking leads. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a company centered around lead <laughs> conversion and I can't follow up with my own leads. I need somebody doing it, you know? Yeah. It's interesting. Um, yeah. And, and I can tell you right now, running a coaching company isn't easy. And I know that it's, uh, and you know, it's, it's so insane to me. It's the same thing I deal with agents. I, I watch Michael dealing with coaches. They do stupid shit. It's like, yeah, it's unbelievable. So, I mean, I definitely would suggest that you, you get somebody and you know, a couple of months from now, I may be in that. Here's the other thing. It's time to raise your prices. Yeah, I do need to raise them. I mean, I'm at, I, I'm at 1850 right now. Um, oh, okay. and I have several clients. 
Yeah, you're higher than I thought you were. Yeah, so I have several clients. I, I, yeah, I was running. I went for, I went from a thousand to 1250. And then I went to 1500 and now I'm at 1850. Like if you have, if you come to us and you're solo, it's 15. If you have a team, it's 1850. And I think I'm going to raise that even higher because of the work that I do with teams. I make a really big impact with teams, you know? Um, and so I, I think I just need to charge more for that. And I don't have any more time left. Um, yeah. Well, and that's why I'm saying you raise your price. So, I mean, it sounds kind of crazy, but at some point in time, you're like, well, you know, it, if I told you I'd pay you 10 grand a month, you, you'd find time for me, right? You're damn straight. I would. Absolutely. <laughs> I would clear the calendar. Did uh, that ever tell you how I hired my executive assistant? No. He, he was working for KW as the tech guy and uh, they were paying him 24 grand a year. And I, I walked up to him one day and I said, Chris, I, I'd be interested if you, you want to, you know, talk about work. Oh, you know, I'm not that interested. And I talked to him for a minute. He's like, I'm good. So I came back to him a week later. I said, hey, Chris, uh, if I offered you a million dollars a year, would you come work for me? And he's like, well, of course I would. I said, good. We're at least negotiating now. And, <laughs> and then basically, I just asked him what he wanted and we worked it out. And the truth of the matter is I, I only went up, I, I, I went up to 36,000 plus bonus. So it's not like wow, I paid that's Year. That's huge for him, though. I mean, twenty-four to thirty-six. Well, yeah, plus plus bonus. So he probably, he makes about forty-eight. So yeah, That's yeah, great. basically double. But you know, he was like, "No, I'm good. I'm good." And but it's just a negotiation, right? That's great. Um, now, are you saying that you would consider coaching for me? Is that what you were saying? I would in a few months. It's something I would consider. Um, again, cool. I need to talk to Michael. I need to make sure Michael won't freak out. <laughs> so. Yeah. What's uh, what's prompting that? Are you just wanting something different, or are you not getting any new uh, clients? I, I like so the problem coaching that I do is after about eighteen months, it gets really really hard mm -hmm. because it, you know I say this all the time. We're not splitting the atom. We're, we're 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 talking about selling real estate, and I'm not saying I don't have anything to bring, and I'm not saying I can't look at your business, and I can look at your PL and tell you to build your team, and you know implement this, and I can do all that stuff. But after 18 months, you need to hear somebody else say say it differently. Yeah, uh, agreed. And you know, I I kind of have the same turn cycle with people. It's usually a year to year and a half um, where I start to feel like what a you know I'm just going to tell you the same shit I've been telling you, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I usually, I mean, I let people go at that point, you know, if they, if they're not finding value, I let them go because I only keep them if they, if they are finding value. Yeah. Well, and I love your model is a lot different than say club wealth. Club wealth is much more comprehensive, but yours is very specific. And I, and I love specific. Um, you know, one of the things that I created for club wealth is basically I, it's a, I don't know, about a 20 point checklist and you go through and you fill out, okay, so lead generation for sellers, what, what do you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 buyers, you know, automation. I mean, there's like all these categories and it's amazing that little piece of information does a lot because it allows people to actually say, Oh shit, I'm not good at this. I am good at this. But again, now we go and talk about it. And again, how many times do I have to tell you to call Fizbo's expires? You know, that's not, you know, at some point in time, you're just going to have to go freaking do it. Right. And, you know, you can call me for advice and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, it, it's not that hard what we do. So, yeah. Uh, well, listen, man, I'd be honored if you wanted to work with me. And um, cool. what, I'm, what I'm working on right now is I'm hiring a salesperson. Um, I'm working on getting ads running because we don't have any advertisement right now you know, our clients just come by word of mouth or referral or seeing this show or reading an article that we write. So we're going to start doing some advertising. And <clears throat> my primary focus is selling people on our training because it doesn't cost, you know, it doesn't cost me anything. And then upgrading them into coaching and, and hopefully getting them into, into group coaching first. Um, because that I can, I can expand that a lot easier than the one-on-one -on -one coaching. Well, and it's a good, right. You, you're creating leverage. Yeah. And then the other, you know, the, on the flip side, I, I still feel like I'm not, I don't think I ever want to have a really big coach centric company. You know what I mean? Like I like having a few really great coaches who want to serve clients at a really high level and charge a lot of money for it, you know, I like it. and then do group coaching. Yeah. And, and I think that's the key. And it's one of the things that's appealing to me about the lab coats thing. So uh, there's two things that are appealing to me about it. So first of all, 
I can teach it for seven weeks or six weeks. I don't remember how long it is, but at the end, I don't, I, I know that I can bring really good content for six weeks straight. That's not hard. Yeah. And it gets harder the longer that we're with each other, but now those people are gone. Now I got a new group of people that I can do it. And, and I'm not saying I don't want to prep for it. Cause I do believe in prep work, but after I've taught the class three times, I'll be able to teach in my sleep, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, That's a huge difference. I found that value too, Brian. Honestly, I've found that um, I like being the genius when we're new in our relationship, right? It's fun. And then it's like a marriage, you know, at first the person's really, really exciting. You're like, woo wee, so exciting. And then after you've been together for a while, you're like, oh, you're still here. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, listen, man, I can't wait to meet you in person. What, what day are you coming in? I fly in on Monday. Okay. So let me see here. I get in, looks like I get, I don't know how to read this, but I, I fly out here. I leave here at 640 at night. Oh, good Lord. So you're not going to get there until midnight. Do you think I'll arrive there at midnight? So 640 your time, it would be what, three hours? Oh, so no, I get there at 930 on Monday. It says in my meeting invite. Okay. I was not reading it correctly. So I get in at 9.30 on Monday. Okay, gotcha. Well, we'll meet on Tuesday. <laughs> because after you, yeah, after you go to the, this and that, you know, by the time you get there, are you, taking a, are you taking an Uber or something from the airport or are you getting a car? I'll take an Uber. Gotcha. So, um, when are we speaking? Which day? I don't know, and I need to find that out. Shit. All right. I, are you going to attend? I mean, I'll attend the conference at the fact that I'll walk around and, you know, I'll shake hands and kiss babies a little bit, but – I probably don't see myself going to a bunch of the, the things. I mean, I'll be, doing, I'll be doing the same. So, and I'm, I'll actually be there on Saturday. My wife's coming with me. So we're going to oh, cool. hang in San Diego. So that's nice, man. Yeah. yeah I'll, uh, so I'm going to be doing probably half of my coaching calls that week. Like I, I've cut half of them. So I'll be coaching in the morning and then in the afternoon, I'll be walking around, shaking hands, kissing babies, doing the, you know, politicking, meeting people. Good. Yeah, it's fun. Have you been to San Diego before? Yeah. Uh, I was actually at the last one that they had there, and it spoke, like, on a panel with Barry. Oh, okay. Well, crap. We, we ran each other, didn't even know it. So I was uh, I was there speaking for Y Lopo. I wasn't speaking for LCA, but I was speaking for Y Lopo. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, great. Well, I'm looking forward to meeting you, man. Awesome. Listen, have a great one. I will uh, see you on Tuesday. Sounds good. See you in San Diego. All right. Later. Bye.